Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, today I'll be reviewing this, which is the Time of the Doctor collector set, and here it is in its rather stylish packaging. It's sort of a mini version of the 11th Doctor's figure set boxes of the 5 inch and character building scale, with the design of the police box and its doors. Unfortunately plastered all over this are some silver diamond shaped information points, which look kind of messy. At the top we get the classic era logo, while this is from the 11th Doctor's era from 2010 to 2013, and it is the Time of the Doctor collector set. It includes the 11th Doctor in purple frock coat with aged and 12th Doctor swappable heads, plus a walking cane and handles accessories. On one side we get an image of handles, while the other has an image of the old 11th Doctor, and on the back there's a promotional image of the 11th Doctor who isn't wearing the same costume this figure's based on, and there's a bit of blurb on the episode itself if you want to give it a read, hit pause. The front of the box opens out like the doors of the police box to reveal this excellent window display, where the figure and its accessories are displayed very neatly in front of this Series 7B TARDIS interior. Unfortunately, these Velcro panels have been added to the set to help keep the doors closed, which kind of detracts from the look of the box and just makes it look untidy. On the inside of one door we get a bit of blurb on the 11th Doctor as well as a list of the set's contents, while the other door introduces us to the 12th Doctor with a bit of a write-up on him. Well, I think I've rambled on enough about the packaging, so let's open it up and have a look at the figure itself. Okay, so here we go, the 11th Doctor, and it's beautiful, isn't it? The head sculpt is clearly taken from the one used for the Series 6 figure, so the features are a little softer, but it is undeniably Matt Smith, what with the prominent bone structure around his eyes and on his cheeks. The eyes, nose and mouth all look good too, while both ears are sculpted very well. The hair, as always, features that great brush stroke and strand design, although his quiff was much shorter in Series 7B and came out to a much sharper point than this. Moving down to the torso, the Doctor is wearing his purple tweed frock coat, which looks excellent. Not only do we get the great detailing on the lapels with the top of the collar actually painted black, the whole coat has been sculpted with this fantastic tweed pattern, which really adds character to it and is a great effect. What's more is that the seams and stitching have been included on the front and back as well. And what really brings it home is the creased and wrinkled material effect, which really makes it look tighter at the top of the back around his shoulder blades, and much looser as it hangs around his legs, resulting in these pleats in the fabric. The arms continue this look with the tweed and creased material sculpting used to great effect. The arms end with his blue shirt sleeves poking out from under the coat, while his hands contain details of fingers and thumbs. On the torso you can see the collar of his blue shirt with his burgundy bow tie, and even the specks of white representing the pattern of the bow tie have been included, while below it you can make out a single white button on the shirt. The Doctor is wearing his black waistcoat, which includes lapels at the top and a subtle amount of wrinkled material sculpting. I love the attention to detail here. Not only do we get the buttons running down the waistcoat, but also the golden fob chain and pendant are present here, with some precise paint apps. The legs are a basic black and contain the same creased and wrinkled effect as seen on previous 11th Doctor 5 inch figure releases, which looks as great as ever. And then we come to the boots, which still have creased detailing and some laces present, but have also been given this brown and grey repaint to match the ones worn in the episode. Finally, the soles are black with one peg hole and a bit of legal drush nimba. So overall for detail, it looks fantastic. Turning to articulation, the head can do your basic 360 degree exorcist twist, the arms can do a full 360 at the shoulder, and move out to 90 degrees at this joint as well. A full 360 is present at the bicep and tricep, the forearm can bend into 90 on the elbow, and there's another 360 on the wrist. The figure offers full 360 degree waist articulation, the legs can kick forwards to more or less 90 degrees, and come out to the sides, but they're somewhat restricted by the coat. A full 360 is present at the top of the leg, while the knee can bend into 90 degrees, and that's really it, so overall for articulation at your basic 5 inch scale joints. Moving on to accessories, this set comes with a ton of them. First up as always, what 11th Doctor isn't complete without his sonic screwdriver? This seems to come from the same sculpt as the Impossible set, but the paint apps are far sharper here, and I love the almost golden look of the copper sections. It slots into the figure's right hand, where it is a little bit awkward to position him pointing it, but like previous 11th Doctors, he can be displayed much easier by checking his readings. Next up, we get a handles accessory, which, to be honest, looks gorgeous and really makes me want a 5 inch figure of the new Cyberman design. The detail on here is just great, as not only do we get the smooth panel look from the updated design, but the damage effect is extraordinary. All these great little scuffs and dents have been sculpted into the head, while the paint apps really work well in aging the head up, so we have these occasional bits of brown wash added to look like rust. Speaking of the paint apps, while they are great, I would have loved to have seen some electric blue added onto here, perhaps on the mouth slit or even on the damage to the the temple to make it look like how it did in the episode. And finally a bunch of wires and tubing hang from the neck, which are made from soft plastic and just set off the head so well. Handles fits into either of the Doctor's hands, but it can be a little bit difficult to make him hold it, and I wish his left hand had been purposely sculpted to make it easier. 
Here we have what is frankly the best head sculpt of this set, the aged 11th Doctor. To attach the alternate heads to the figure, just pull the Matt Smith one until it pops off as it's on a mushroom cap joint, then push the alternate head down until it fits into place. As I said, the detail on here is unbelievable, with the face sculpt containing this great wrinkled and aged effect on the chin and cheeks, and those lines around the mouth. It's such a small, yet precise detailing, and it even continues on the neck, while lines run across his forehead. Frankly, this is one of the best face sculpts character have ever produced. He's also wearing Amy Pond's reading glasses. These are permanently attached to his face and even include detailing of lenses inside the frames. And finally, that hair sculpt is exceptional. Just look at it. The sculpting is unbelievable. It looks long, tangled and swept back, with the individual strands of hair visible, while the silvery white paint app set it off perfectly. This really is the epitome of character's potential when it comes to sculpting. This is excellent. Being an old man, the Doctor needs a cane to walk, so one has been included. How oh, nice. It's just made from black plastic, but I like how it's been moulded to look warped and like it's made from wood. The cane slots into the figure's right hand, and it's sculpted perfectly so that the bent handle works in tandem with the design of the hand so it's held straight. And finally, to turn him into the regenerated 12th Doctor and alternate torso has been included, this time minus the bow tie. To attach this, first of all remove the head sculpt, then detach the pegs from either side of the torso and pull the coat back along its arms. This will allow you to pull the torso panel forward and up over the peg on the neck, removing it. Place the new torso panel over the neck and push it into the chest, bring the coat back over the shoulders and pop the pegs back into place. And finally attach the 12th Doctor head and there you have the regenerated figure. As you can see, the face sculpt is a scaled up version of the one initially seen on the 3 and 3 quarter scale regenerated figure, but being 5 inches this allows for much more detail, which makes this look far closer to Peter Capaldi's appearance. It's still not perfect however, and I think that's due to the jaw being slightly too wide, but you can now see the slight wrinkles around his eyes, mouth and on his forehead, which does age him up slightly. Like the 3 and 3 quarter scale version, this figure also has that weird raised eyebrow thing, and I think the reason why this was done was to give him a more neutral look, but they really should have sculpted in his attack eyebrows. As for the hair sculpt, it does look good, but the paint app should have been a much lighter grey than this, but still the sculpting of his slightly curly hair is brilliant. As for the alternate shirt, it's nice that we're given this option, but surely the top button wasn't open after he took his bow tie off, was it? I just don't get why the shirt has been sculpted as having the top button open on the figures, but hey, it's not as noticeable here as it is on the 3 and 3 quarter version. Doing a size comparison, the figure looks excellent when paired with the 10th Doctor and also the War Doctor which was released earlier in the year, which makes a brilliant Dev the Doctor figure set, while it's also in scale with the Flight Control TARDIS and the Oswin figure, or Clara figure if you've modified it. So overall, what do I think of this set? Well, I love it. It looks excellent both in and out of its box, the detail is exquisite and the articulation is fair. What really makes it shine is the sheer amount of accessories though, from the handles to the cane to the swappable heads. And while they've included the alternate torso for the regenerated 12th Doctor, obviously the aged 11th head is inaccurate with this set. However, if you purchased the impossible set earlier in the year, the head is swappable with the 11th Doctor, giving the aged head a much more accurate body. True, the waistcoat is inaccurate and he was wearing a bow tie in the time of the Doctor, but with a little customization, this can be easily achieved. As a fan, it's great to finally get a Capaldi head sculpt in the 5 inch scale, and surely this means a 5 inch figure of the 12th Doctor in full costume is on the horizon. Plus, it's great to get a 5 inch version of the 11th Doctor in his Series 7B attire, as I much prefer this costume over the tweed jacket look. My one issue here is the price. For an RRP of £30, I was hoping for two figures, making it a regeneration twin pack like we've seen with the 9th and 10th Doctor figures in the past. But still, the sheer amount of accessories, coupled with the highly detailed detailed box makes this a great collector set for adults and kids, and for what is no doubt the final new version of this character to be released in a very long time, it's a fitting send-off for the 11th Doctor. And so that does it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to stay subscribed for more videos, and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thanks again for watching, and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye. Yeah,